Like many of us, you may have laid witness to some bright strings of light shooting across the night sky recently. Shooting stars? Orchestrated drones? UFOs, perhaps? While any of those things would be equally as exciting, chances are what you were really seeing was Starlink, the satellite constellation being constructed by Elon Musk and his budding team at SpaceX. So what exactly is Starlink, and why is it projected to bring in around $30 billion of yearly revenue by the year 2025? Simply put, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation being constructed by SpaceX, Elon Musk's famously ambitious aerospace company. A satellite internet constellation, or mega constellation as it's also known, is a network of satellites that work together in unison to bring us internet access. The firm is working towards building a network of 12,000 satellites to provide high-quality, affordable internet to essentially the entire planet. There are currently 420 Starlink satellites in orbit today, 300 of which were sent up between January and May of 2020 alone. As for the specs, we'll only know how Starlink's speed and latency figures stack up against the competition when real-world use is in full swing. However, Musk has suggested that the service could reach speeds of up to 1 gigabit per second, with a latency of between 25 and 35 milliseconds. Musk being Musk has also projected some more ambitious figures, saying that his team is aiming for sub-20 millisecond latency initially and plan to reach sub-10 milliseconds over time. A beta testing partnership between the US Air Force and Starlink called Global Lightning saw download speeds of 610 megabits per second, so the estimates might not be all that far-fetched. So fast, reliable internet, low latency must be expensive, right? Well, not as expensive as you might think. There may be an upfront cost for Starlink internet as the system will rely on ground terminals or gateways to bring the internet into your home. Musk says these terminals look like small to medium-sized pizzas, leading to them being simply known as pizza boxes. Each pizza box is estimated to cost anywhere from between $100 to $300, but that's not being commented officially and it will probably be included in the monthly rental fee anyway. As for that all-important monthly fee, again, there have been no official numbers released. However, the president of SpaceX said during an interview, is anybody paying less than 80 bucks a month for crappy service? Nope, that's why we're going to be successful. This has pointed many towards thinking that the service will cost around $80 and maybe even a little less. Comparatively, a 12 to 100 megabit per second internet plan from Viasat costs between $30 and $150 per month, and a 25 megabit plan from HughesNet ranges from around $60 to $150 per month. $80 per month for Starlink, with internet speeds potentially reaching 1 gigabit per second, sounds rather competitive to me. Musk started Starlink as a SpaceX spin-off in order to fund his intergalactic exploration dreams of one day making it to Mars. Seeing as he was already in the business of sending stuff to space, capturing a significant portion of the estimated $1 trillion worldwide internet connectivity market seemed like a pretty good place to start. In 2015, Musk stated that he'd filed documents to place around 4,000 satellites into low Earth orbit. However, this number quickly turned into 12,000, and he may eventually be granted permission to send up as many as 30,000. To put that into perspective, according to the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, only 9,000 artificial satellites have ever been launched into space, and just 2,000 remain to this day. So why does Musk need so many of these Starlink satellites, and how do they work in the first place? For starters, most of us tend to think of all satellites as being these great big pieces of engineering with two giant solar panels sticking out at either end. Starlink satellites are in fact relatively small. They weigh 500 pounds, are around the same size as a tabletop and feature just one solar panel. Krypton-powered iron thrusters allow the satellites to adjust their orbit while in use and deorbit when they reach the end of their working life. The satellites also have the ability to autonomously avoid space debris. SpaceX claims that their Starlink satellites are the first ever Krypton-propelled spacecraft, which is said to be the future of space propulsion. The Starlink system works by internet signals being communicated up to any Starlink satellite, being spread out throughout the network, and then being fired back down to any point on Earth. The process works in a somewhat similar way to traditional internet satellites, in which a signal is sent from the internet service provider to the satellite in orbit and is then triangulated back down to the receiver. However, in the Starlink system, the signal is sent from the internet service provider to one Starlink satellite, which then sends the signal to one of the four other satellites it's connected to. The signal is passed along the network at the speed of light until it reaches the optimum satellite for sending the signal down to the receiver. This process reduces latency or lag significantly over long distances. Each Starlink satellite is equipped with four incredibly powerful phased array antennas, with each being capable of handling an enormous amount of radio wave throughput. This facilitates a very efficient transfer of information and essentially very fast internet speeds. 
Delivering the internet via satellite is so much more efficient than by wire because the signal travels 47% faster as a wave through the vacuum of space than it does travelling along a fibre optic cable. Fibre optic internet will remain faster over short distances, but over longer ranges there will be no comparison. Starlink will also be able to provide such reliable and fast internet because of where they are being placed in orbit. Current internet satellites orbit at around 35,800 kilometers above the Earth, which is really far away, so the coverage area for each satellite is great, but the distance also results in a time delay between sending and receiving data. Starlink satellites orbit significantly closer at around 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This means that they triangulate data much faster with minimal delay, but also means that their coverage area is far smaller, so we need a load more of them to build up a comprehensive network that offers reliable global coverage. Now, I'm sure many of you are expecting a catch, but there really isn't one. Unless you're a stargazer, that is. After the first launch of 60 Starlinks went up in May 2018 and the second batch in November, astronomers immediately complained about how bright the satellite chains were and how the light pollution was compromising their observations. Researchers have expressed concerns about future images of outer space being negatively affected by the Starlink constellation. Radio astronomers are also expecting to encounter interference from Starlink's radio-based antennas. SpaceX received even more backlash in late 2019 when the European Space Agency announced that they had to undertake evasive maneuvers with one of their satellites to avoid crashing into Starlink 44, one of the first 60 satellites in the mega constellation. SpaceX has expressed that they are working with many agencies and space organizations to mitigate any potential issues, and they are also actively working towards a number of solutions to make their satellites less visible. SpaceX has already come up with a darkening treatment to lessen the satellite's reflectivity, which is a technology that will be applied to all new Starlink satellites. They've stated that as the constellation grows, they'll be able to move them further out into orbit, making them far less visible to Earth and less likely to come into the path of other low-orbiting satellites. Both moves are definitely a step in the right direction, but that doesn't exactly get rid of the problem, so advocates are calling for greater regulations from government agencies to force the company's hand, so to speak. The enormous benefits of global internet coverage are undoubtedly going to outweigh the cost to astronomers, so it's unlikely that Musk is even a little bit worried about these so-called advocates interfering with his plans. However, it's not exactly his style to just bulldozer over other people's business, so I'm sure that SpaceX will continue to work towards reducing their impact on other people's industries. Starlink is set to start offering services in the northern US and Canada by late 2020 and expects to offer near-global coverage of the populated world by the year 2021. These dates are just around the corner, making Starlink's estimated yearly revenue of $30 billion by 2025 seem even more mind-boggling. However, if you take into consideration that internet access is said to be a $1 trillion industry, Starlink has only to capture 3% of that market to hit those figures. As it stands, SpaceX's annual revenue is just a fraction of that number at $2 billion, and Musk says that number could only really stretch to $3 billion if they continue down the same path. The huge influx in revenue Starlink might, and most probably will, break in will open up a whole new world of possibilities to SpaceX, not to mention speed up their ever-increasing rate of development within the aerospace technology sector. Musk's plans to get people to Mars by 2050 might be a possibility after all.